chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness, and something I get asked very frequently comes in some form regarding body fat. We're going to hopefully get within a decent range, but knowing your precise exact body fat is not going to be possible really under any scenario. Even if you go pay for something like a DEXA scan, those still can have a 3-5% to margin of error either way. And really, nobody needs to know their exact body fat percentage. It's really just something that people like to use to get more clicks online. But knowing that exact number really changes nothing. But even if you're not fully satisfied with your body at the current point, you still, we all still, want to look good in the gym. And that's why I have partnered with Kinetic Kings, the official provider of my drip in the gym. Kinetic Kings is my new destination for active wear and street wear. Every one of their products is made directly in the USA, right out of California. The shorts ride roughly thigh height, so if you're a guy that doesn't skip legs, you can show off your quads. And their shirts run oversized, so they make perfect pump covers. I know a lot of you guys will never show any part of your upper body until you got your pump. Kinetic Kings is rapidly rising in popularity, and a lot of their merch sells out fast. So be sure to sign up for their messaging list if anything you're looking for is currently sold out. You'll be notified once it comes back in stock. If you guys are looking to give them a try and up your gym swag, you can use code MK for 10% off your order on their website, kinetickings.com. Let's refer to a well-used example of a body fat comparison chart. So we can see here we've got 1 to 4, 5 to 7, 8 to 10, 11 to 12, 13 to 15, 16 to 19, it goes up to 35 to 40. Notice in this chart, and these are not exactly bad examples because it's very hard to kind of pinpoint photos to kind of put in a comparison like this, but these are not the same person. And that is probably the biggest issue when it comes to these general body fat comparisons like this. You're using different people who have different levels of training experience, different levels of muscle mass, different heights, different weights. I mean, just in this picture alone, the 1-4% to looks like a heavyweight IFBB pro bodybuilder. 5 to 7 looks like more of a typical shredded fitness model type of body. 16 to 19 looks like a guy that might have been training for up to a year. 13 to 15 and 11 to 12, those are probably guys with a number of years of training experience. So depending on your situation and circumstance right now, your training history, muscle mass, different factors, you at 13 to 15%, you look very different than somebody else at that same body fat. Even with your own self in the future, three to five years from now, you at that same body fat back then versus in the future, you're going to look drastically different. There's a very good chance you have much more visible abs later on, even though your body fat is the exact same once you've built a considerable amount of muscle mass. So with that said, I found a few examples of body fat pictures online. So this guy here on the left, it says 15% plus body fat. 15% or so, I'd say, is probably a decent estimate, maybe a little bit above that. Then on the right, it says 7.5%. Now, he definitely got leaner. He's got solid abs, this guy, right? He's got the serratus up there, he's got ab lines, but his abs are definitely not hard enough, in my estimation, to really warrant being 7.5%. You're talking legitimate 7% and below, guys. I mean, you're going to be really grainy at that point. 10%, I'd say, is probably a good range around there, but 7.5%, I think he's lowballing that too much. Now, the same applies here for this photo. This guy says 10% body fat. Now, he's kind of in a similar situation to what I have going on because I can have a lot of veins in my arms and even in my quads, also on my shoulders, but my abs always just take the longest to come in. We're going to talk about distribution coming up soon. But you look at this guy's abs, I mean, you can see that they're there, but they're not sharp by any metric. I mean, if you got this guy in kind of the wrong frame, you wouldn't even really know that he has abs, because I'm sure he's flexing in this picture too. So 10% here, I would call this closer to probably 12 to 13, maybe a bit higher. And this one is just not even close. So we see on the left, he says 16% body fat, 157 pounds. And then on the right, 12% body fat and 147 pounds. Now, this guy, without question, has less muscle mass than the first two that we just talked about. That said, though, 12% body fat for this dude. I would say this is closer to 20% body fat than 12. His arms and his shoulders and his collarbones are still relatively pronounced, but just that kind of center mass area, 
that is a big problem area for a lot of people and especially for a lot of dudes. So that brings us on to the topic of body fat distribution. And most people's problem areas are going to be as follows. The chest, the stomach, and the ass. And I fit this profile too. It's why a lot of people, if they gain a good amount of body fat, they start to resemble a keg. Their outer limbs, their arms and their legs aren't really going to hold much fat, and especially if you don't have much muscle in those areas, that keg shape is really going to take over. Now, in my experience, I think that women tend to hold more fat in their arms and legs than men do. You hear a lot of women complain about the bat wings in their arms, or the fact that their thighs get really chunky whenever they gain weight. I don't think I've ever heard a guy complain about getting chunky legs. Now that said, most of you watching here are guys, and a lot of guys in the gym have a never-ending obsession with being shredded. Guys, in terms of truly being shredded, not the mainstream media's understanding of it whenever you just have a little bit of ab showing. If you want to get legitimately diced, like Ziz, or anything like that, you're going to have to get uncomfortably lean. You're going to have to do first world suffering for a while to get to that point. And a lot of guys who want to get down to that point eventually realize they simply can't sustain it for long. And some people frame that as, oh, it's a lack of willpower, a lack of discipline. That can definitely be part of it. But unless you are legitimately competing in bodybuilding, I don't really see the point of ever having to get that lean. I mean, at that point, it's only impressing dudes. Women are not sitting there micro-analyzing your body fat like men do on Reddit forums and in YouTube comment sections. A lot of you, chances are, are going to have to bulk for a long time to build all of the muscle so you have a lot of it to reveal underneath. And this is exactly why a lot of guys who start from a skinny fat position once they focus on cutting first, they end up looking like gremlins. They barely have any muscle, then they cut, so they greatly halt their own ability to build muscle, of which they barely have. Then they're surprised when they lean down and their stomach is still flat, with little or no ab definition to be seen. And that's on top of the fact that their back is hollow, their arms are roughly 12 and a half to 13 inches, and they struggle to bench 155 pounds. A select percentage of guys have the genetic gifts where they're gonna have visible abs pretty much all their life if they want to. Some guys have them right after they hit puberty. Some guys even have them before puberty. That's how genetically gifted they are. I'm going to assume you're not in the same position. I certainly was not. It took me a number of years of training, bulking and cutting to finally get visible abs. A lot of us are going to have to go through the trenches for that to happen. It simply is what it is. And I see a lot of comments like this. Guys will finally accept that they need to bulk for a while to really build their base. But then they get concerned with the face fat. Everybody's face is going to gain some degree of body fat as your weight goes up. That said, I cannot totally relate to that problem because... I can grow a beard. In a lot of those cases, you're going to have basically two options. You can suck it up and deal with the face fat and push the bulk, get it over with and then cut. Or you can maybe wait it out and see if you can eventually start to grow a beard as you stay leaner. Some guys use a lot of products on their face to get their beards to grow and stuff. I'm not familiar with that. But the point is, guys, if you right now are coming from a typical genetic background, you're going to have to build a lot of muscle before you really get lean. Because if you want to get lean first and then build the muscle, you're going to get lean and not really like how you look and then you're going to bulk anyway. It's going to end up being a waste of time for a lot of you. But on that topic, we're going to dive into now love handles. Now, this is something you tend to see in big weight loss commercials, kind of mainstream media stuff, right? Like, oh, do you want to lose the love handles? Take this special supplement, do this special thing, put on this belt around your stomach that burns the fat off or whatever. But I get a lot of comments still from guys kind of in the more so lifting side of things, and they still ask about love handles. And sometimes they're right, but other times I see the pictures that you guys send me, and I'm thinking, love handles? I think you guys are pretty off base. A lot of guys in the gym scene think that they have love handles just because they have normal fat deposits on the side of their torso, like almost every single person does. But if you compare the two what actual love handles look like among the general populace, it's really not even close. So actual love handle looks something like this. It's when you can grab a noticeable chunk of fat, and generally your sides are not going to be straight up and down. You're going to have fat that kind of pudges out. So as always, guys, keep in mind the disparity between what people who are not totally entrenched in the body dysmorphic fitness culture, what they say, and what they use as reference points, versus what the people in the body dysmorphic fitness culture 
use as reference points. So a lot of guys, even if they're pretty lean everywhere else, that little bit of love handle is really still going to throw them off, and that could end up derailing their progress. So here is an example I recently got from a guy who contacted me in our Discord via the Patreon. He says, hey, I weigh 153 pounds, 5 foot 10, I don't know what direction to take. So we can see his photos here, let's start with the lower row. This guy is pretty lean, you would agree, right? I mean, he's got ab lines visible. When he flexes more, you can see he's got kind of those, what would you call it, like the outer abs near the serratus area, those are definitely visible too. You can tell he's got some lines in his biceps and everything. Then we look at the back up here, he's got lines in his back as well. And his back is pretty wide, especially for his experience. This guy has a good amount of muscle mass for his height and weight. So you can see that he's got a solid V taper, but his, this is what he thinks are his love handles. They're sort of going outward on the way down, but take into account again the pictures he showed us from the front. Nobody seeing these pictures from the front would think this guy has any semblance of love handle, because he doesn't. But when he turns around, there's a little bit of fat back there, and he was saying that he could grab it, and that's what had him sort of concerned. And I understand that point. That said though, just look at the numbers alone. 5 foot 10, 153 pounds. Anybody watching here knows that you have a serious growth cap if you're going to stay at that same weight or barely creep above that weight. You're going to really handicap your muscle and strength results long term if you do so. The thing is, once you get into the social media gym scene, especially bodybuilding, your reference points and your benchmarks for what you can attain and what looks normal, they get completely skewed. So I found this one searching up for this video. This guy put a post on Reddit on our fitness. Ugh. He says, anybody else plagued by love handles? Looks like he's got a six pack going there. He's got the serratus cut up. I mean, even going into his middle obliques, this guy is definitely lean. And he's got the Adonis belt too. But he says that he has love handles because of these little things right here. Now, the question would be, if he got really shredded, like if he got down to 5% or something, would those disappear? Maybe, but you really can't say that for sure. And this is one of the toughest things when it comes to the sort of side fat and love handle discussion. Plenty of the most ripped guys on earth, champion high level bodybuilders even, still have the so called love handles, even when they're at their peak on stage. So before we even start name dropping here, I found this picture on the homepage of a site that sells posing trunks. Number 23, as you can see, is peeled. His abs are extremely defined, they're very sharp. Number 15, he's in a different pose. It looks like number 23 is doing an ab and thigh pose. 15 looks like he might be doing a front double bicep or something like that. Even so, just based on this picture, it looks like 23 is more ripped, or let's even just say for the sake of argument, as ripped as number 15. But look at the difference in the size of their waists. 23 has fantastic abs, but he still has what a lot of guys in fitness would call love handles. What I would call that is just the fact that he has very well-developed lower oblique muscles. So as I mentioned earlier with the Reddit guy, if that guy got even more shredded, would those so-called love handles go away? I'm not convinced that they would. Now compare that to 15, this guy's waist is microscopic, it's like non-existent. He clearly does not have as well developed of obliques as number 23, but for aesthetic purposes, and we're going to talk about this in a second, the old blocky waist adage that training obliques gives you a big blocky waist, guys will say not to do it. Some guys even say like don't deadlift because it makes your waist too blocky. That said though, the obliques are not simply right at the bottom of your stomach. Your obliques run up and down the entire side of your torso. It's funny because a lot of times in the same conversation, guys want the best of both. So they will want to have the shreds up and down the side of their stomach, but then they don't want to have their waist at the bottom become too blocky. I guess it's sort of a balancing act to get the best of both worlds here. I'm not sure entirely how possible it is. Once again, genetics are going to totally impact this, because there are some people that never train their obliques at all, they still have big blocky waists. On the flip side too, there are plenty of people that have genetically lean midsections, they might do all kinds of side crunches and side bends and twists and stuff, their waist never really gets that blocky. I guess you could avoid directly training obliques or maybe only very moderately train them, maybe lower intensity, low volume, something like that, just for general purposes, if you want to test that out, but I think this is really going to come down to genetics, and the leaner that you get, the more that your overall body fat is going to go down, 
and that includes the sides. If there's a little bit there that you simply can't get rid of, you can keep pushing when it comes to cutting and really fight for it, but most of you have no need to do that anyway, so I don't see why you would put in all of that fighting for a really minimal payoff. But this has been it for me guys, I hope you found this video informative, drop a like if you did. Shout out to the Patreon supporters and the channel members, you can join those and get in contact with me down below. You can also get your program, revivalfitness.org slash programs, to stop wasting time in the gym and start making real gains, as well as using my links to save on other great products and services. And I will catch you guys next time.